On July 7th, I drove up from Ocean City, New Jersey to attend a New York art opening. It was 94 degrees, festive, and packed with hundreds of people who came to see some very powerful images by one of America's leading figurative painters. I arrived early and met some people with a bit of a southern accent. I'm Sandy Scarborough. I'm Bo's sister. And we're just so excited to be here tonight. I'm just proud of his work and what he's done with his life. And I'm excited to be able to say I'm his big sister. Meeting Sandy was a treat for me. In a 2011 film that I made about him, Bo described his special love for her. He said, my sister Sandy was my guardian. She treated me lovingly. Everyone else was distracted by their own dramas, real or imagined. I remember my sweet 16 sister, cheerleader, becoming homecoming queen, loving me alone at night. My paintings of young girls reflect my love for my sister. Oh, my stars. I mean, can you not be proud? I'm so <laughs> proud of him. And just bursting out all over the fact that he's done this. It's just amazing. These are my grandchildren. My son, Grant, and their mother. I'm the mother of all these beautiful Oh, boys. my goodness. <laughs> How come Bo hasn't snagged you to be in one? I'm room? the only one. He hasn't painted. Oh, I, bet I think he... we should tell him it's time. I bet he's <laughs> chomping at the bed. <laughs> no, yeah. it's OK. <laughs> Uh, you do look familiar. She's been. I was in School of Charm. Oh, School of Charm. Which figure were you? The redhead. <laughs> he told me to run back and forth behind Jesse and my aunt. So, were you exhausted by the time you finally finished? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I like to run. Okay, you're the favorite, <laughs> so go show me which figure you are. Was it fun to see yourself in the painting? Um, yeah, it was pretty fun. With the wind started blowing, that's how I got this position. Oh, so he, he took the pictures outside? Or? Yes, it was outside. I was really at this graveyard. When I was modeling, I wasn't holding it in this drag at all. And actually, he painted my eyes wrong. That's the only mistake in this painting, that I have green eyes, and he painted my eyes blue. Oh, James McElhinney. You know, like a lot of Bo's works are very inviting visually, very intriguing in a narrative sense. You don't get the feeling you're being read a report. You're being invited into a story. And that's kind of a very southern thing, a literary thing. Faulkner, Wolf, or McCullers, or Harper Lee. So you think these are open-ended narratives without an easy explanation that different sides can think different things? Well, of course, they're not describing historical events that are known to anybody but perhaps Bo. And I don't even know if he's completely aware of them until they're done. And then even then, even though he wrote the story and he painted the picture, I don't feel like he's trying to tyrannize us with his interpretation of it. What do you think the painting is about? Me. <laughs> That's a good answer. I asked your granddaughter what she thought the painting was about and she had a very good answer. What she said? Me. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think she's on to something profound. What do Bo's paintings mean? Are they a mirror which reflects the viewer's ideas back onto himself? In this film, I wanted to find out how people interpret and react to Bo's powerful yet enigmatic artworks. I asked my friend, the artist and professor, Jack Turnock, for his take on a painting called The American. Jack said, as in many of Bo's paintings, everyday people are elevated to heroic stature. By his clothing, I see this as a normal husband and father defending his family or home with the nearest weapon at hand. In this case, a bird hunting shotgun. It doesn't matter who or what the attacker is. 
What's important is that the man is brave enough and willing to stand up to it. I just want to know who he's looking at. Is he hunting or is he about to shoot a person? What do you think? He's about to shoot a person. That was the first painting I saw when I walked in. So I was just like, whoa. I think it's supposed to be that, you know? Yeah, it's supposed to be that way. He's not a white man holding a gun by accident. I think you're supposed to jump to that conclusion when you look at the picture. Are you a fan? Oh, big time. Since uh, I saw Bone in the armory, and then that's where I first saw Bo's work. But I think the show is, I'm, I'm just stunning. You have a particular favor. Uh, it's hard to say. I, at first, I wasn't sure. You know, this was so intense with the gun, and I have a daughter who's from Newtown. But it's, it's so powerful. And uh, his technique is just so, you know, he's gotten so great. It's, it's so powerful. And uh, he sums it up, everything just... A hero, a racist, a murderer? Why do people see the same painting so differently? The writer and artist John Seed, who has interviewed Bo at length, told me, my primary reaction is that Bo likes to leave open lots of room for the imagination. So the way that people respond tells you more about them than it does about the work of art. John Seed went on to write, Bo wants to make a painting that a Southern Republican or a Western Democrat can both spend time wondering over. That's why I call him the intermediary. I cannot think of another contemporary artist who can challenge and shake a viewer to the extent that Bo does. And I think it's because, although he personally has feelings on issues, he resolutely refuses to project his own viewpoint onto these images. Each of his large paintings has an essay next to it that Bo wrote. The American became seared in my mind when I was rereading To Kill a Mockingbird a couple of summers ago. It was inspired by the scene in which Atticus shoots the rabid dog in the street, to me, the crux of the story. The situation with guns in America is untenable. I have protested for years at National Rifle Association conventions, at gun shows in Pennsylvania, Georgia, and on the Capitol steps in Washington after Sandy Hook. I could have had someone else pose, but I didn't want to incriminate or implicate anyone else. We project. We blame the other. The American looks out from an archetypal stance, ready to defend his house, his property, and his family from the evils that lie in wait. The other is forever terrifying. Sorry? I'm Eddie Leroy Jr. and I'm a young photographer. Halloween from the Lacuna series is my favorite painting. Mostly because when I look at paintings, I like to go exactly for body language and facial expressions just to kind of get like a vibe. And I try to create my own story. And then once I do that, I apply it to what's going on currently, if it's applicable. And then I read the artist's statement. Just, it's just fun. That's just how I do it. Was your interpretation at all the same as the artist's statement? Not really, because I didn't think of any of the references that the artist stated. But he did state that time seemed to slow in a painting, and I definitely got that. It's like a little kid in the midst of Halloween, so the energy's high, all the kids are scattering around, but he's just locked in this one position in the middle of the street. His eyes are fixed on something. It makes me wonder, what was able to distract him from that enjoyment of Halloween? Getting candy, what was it? What is he looking at? 
Vince Desiderio, who also knows a little bit about narrative painting. Can you give me an idea about what Bo is doing? I've been asked some difficult questions recently, but that is a difficult question. The person who knows that best is Bo, but what one can see in the pictures, I think, is that he seems to be engaged in a, a mythic presentation of, and other people have said this, of American life. The idea is that you don't make a declarative statement, you pose a question. A declarative sentence is of less consequence and value than a carefully articulated question. And the picture obviously poses the question as to how any member of an audience will interact with it. So it begs of the audience to come to their own conclusions. And I think that's really what his work is all about. That's the enigma of his work. But it's an enigma that's engaging because of the playing off the qualities of incredible finesse with paint and drawing and a kind of optimism that seems to be there even though the whole agenda seems to have been tarnished over time. Bo wrote in his essay about the promised land, the paintings are not didactic. There is no right interpretation of them. All narratives are open-ended. The rower has little choice but to push through, to move forward, to keep rowing. It is an act of the will. I think that some of Bo's paintings are about the power of the arts to console and help us through the dangers of life. Love and family are also recurring themes in his work. has written, my work isn't trying to answer anything. The paintings are visual metaphors for what it feels like to be alive. I was thinking about that when suddenly two of his nieces ran up to me crying, the ghost is here, the ghost is here. What's it like to see yourself in a fancy art gallery? Um, really fun. <laughs> the dad of the I'm ghost. The father, yes, of John Martin, who both painted and had lots of children come downtown to Columbus and dressed them up in Halloween, and he just happened to end up being the centerpiece. Truthfully, we had no idea he would be the focal point of the piece, but of course we were very happy when we saw it. People love that painting. As soon as he put on the makeup and kind of realized what was going on, he really got into the character and was almost in the zone. And it was something we hadn't normally seen from him, but Bo happened to capture it, so it's really cool. So I asked myself, have I figured out what Bo's paintings mean? Maybe not. But I did come to realize that the truth within them 
is poetic rather than factual. A little girl at Easter with band-aids covering wounds like Jesus had. Resurrection of Christ and hopes that the South, as well, will rise again. A man defending an empty town against an unseen enemy. Three figures lost at sea, but not yet abandoning hope. A ghostly figure out of time and apart from his friends. The meaning may elude me, but the power of Bo's poetic imagery can't help but stick in my mind. I loved meeting so many of the real-life models who have played parts in his enigmatic narratives. And just before I left for home, I met one more. How old's your mother? 92. This is my friend John. He's filming you. hard for me to think of him as anything else but my sweet baby brother. He was always had this tender heart.